Hi, I'm Walt Allen, and I'm hoping you'll join me um, in what I think will be a fun and interesting class based on James Glick's book, Time Travel, A History. If you're not familiar with James Glick, I'm going to tell you a little bit about his books. Here's a nice photo of him on the back cover. He's one of my favorite um, science writers, along with Richard Rhodes. Some of you will be familiar with Richard Rhodes as uh, he used his book, uh, The Making of the Atomic Bomb, in a uh, Ollie class last fall. Glick's first book was a smashing success in 1987 called Chaos. It was originally intended as a book for the lay public, but um, it introduced many scientists to the new science of chaos. And um, it had a profound effect on me, and my copy's pretty well worn, um, and also on some of my colleagues in the neonatal intensive care unit at Maine Medical Center. It um, resulted in my, um, uh, I would say my most uh, prestigious publication ever in the uh, National Academy, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Here's the name of this publication. And it was authored by um, a gentleman named George Sugihara, who was a mathematician from Scripps, along with um, Dan Sobel, a neonatologist at the Maine Medical Center, and uh, interestingly also, um, Kenneth D. Allen, let's get that straight there so you can see it, Kenneth D. Allen, who is my son. It's Ken's only science publication. He grew up to be an uh, um, art history professor. So after uh, Chaos, which um, was nominated for um, the National Book Award and for the Pulitzer Prize in 1987. Uh, Glick went on to write some other great books who are, that are also in my library. Here's one of my favorites, a biography of uh, Richard Feynman, a biography of uh, Isaac Newton, um, a book called The Information, which I don't have on my desk, and most recently, the book we're gonna use in this class. We will read the book together during the class, not actually reading it together, rather reading it on your own in the week between our two-hour classes. Hopefully, like me, you will find time travel, a history, quite a surprise. I expected a book about the physics of time travel and quantum mechanics. There's a bit of that, but really it's about the idea of time travel and where it came from, not, as it turns out, from physicists or even philosophers, but from the world of fiction and what came to be called science fiction. Glick tells this story with amusement and his usual thorough understanding of the diverse fields and fictional ideas about time and time travel that it has influenced. And as well as reading James Glick's exposition of the idea of time travel, we'll also read some of his sources. These include a group of short stories from the uh, best time travel stories of the 20th century stories that I'll make available to you as PDFs, and including the novella that will open the class, H.G. Wells' The Time Machine, and then as a uh, culmination of all of the interesting things in the book, we're going to read Charles Yu's hilarious and interesting How to Live Safely in a Science Fictional Universe. And there will be videos explaining Minkowski diagrams, Einsteinian time dilation, entropy, wormholes, and the physics of closed time-like circuits. The upshot of which will be to reconfirm your logical intuition that time travel is not possible, except through a truism coined by Ursula K. Le Guin. Story is our only boat for sailing on the, on the river of time. Let's do that again. Story is our only boat for sailing on the river of time. I think it'll be fun and I hope you'll join me.